Welcome everybody to the UI UX workshop where we take stuff that looks like this and I don't know, we make it look a little bit better. All right, so welcome everybody. So for this UI UX workshop, the theme is photographs in your UI design because you're going to see two of them rely heavily on photographs. So let's take a look at the three submissions that we're going to be revamping in terms of the UI and UX. All right, so first we have this one from Discord user Twinaz or Twinaz or something like that. Next up we have this submission by the guy obsessed with red. That is actually his Discord username. And then finally, we have this one by JS Nerd. All right, guys, so as always, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and a comment, and also definitely subscribe if nothing else, because at 500,000 subscribers, I'm going to be releasing a music reveal video set in the early 80s. I'll shut up, I know I keep on harping on that. Let's get started. Before we begin though, Linode, the sponsor of this video, makes it easy to host your site, your app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. With one-click apps like WordPress and Drupal, getting up and running is easy. With back-end access to your server, customization options are all but limitless. A fully configurable DNS manager allows for you to easily switch your domain over to your new server, and SSL certificates can be installed for free using open source tools. So sign up using the link below to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. This design has simplicity going for it, but there are several areas that I wanted to address while still maintaining the overall feel and layout. So here I'm creating the same type of 50-50 split layout with the white on the left and darker desaturated blue on the right. For the logo, instead of center aligning it with so little white space, I'm putting it on the traditional left side of the header and for the navigation, instead of putting it way at the bottom, which is bad for UX as people may not notice it, I'm right aligning it to the header. Next up, I'm giving myself a bit more white space to work with the design, so I increase the artboard size, which helps frame the UI a bit more. And because I don't want to travel too far outside of his original design, I'm recreating his logo as I plan on centering it as well. And one thing about this logo though, it looks like a U instead of a V, which is, you know, his first initial of his logo is a V. So I redesign it to look more like a V. Now next up, I'm just centering, centering it a bit more and working with the colors to make the actual letter mark stand out more and not be such an afterthought as the old U was. Now next, to the very right and left, vertically aligned were the text elements, your vision, and your reality, which is way too obscure and difficult to read. So we have all this white space here in the two left and right columns, so I decided to feature those pieces of type there and make them large. Finally, to really bring some context to the large empty spaces of the two columns, I decided to put relevant photographs as backgrounds. So I chose people looking at art for your vision, and for your reality, I chose sort of like a blank canvas. For this design, it has a lot of potential. I like the monochromatic feel, but there are just a few areas that I wanted to make some slight adjustments to. First, so that I could recreate it, I put in the bike roughly in the same position, though I end up tinkering with that a little bit later on. Now next, I take the logo, and right now it's fine in terms of placement, so that's the same. Then I have the navigation. His choice of font for the navigation had a lot of issues with bad kerning, so I chose a different font. Yes, one that's not Montserrat or Nunito, amazing. And I end up moving the navigation a bit further away from the logo as it's just too cluttered otherwise. Next up, it is his hamburger icon menu, which I thought looked way too squashed, so I redesigned that. Next, we have the headline, which I thought the previous designer had the placement too low on the page, so I moved it up a bit. And for the subheadline, instead of centering it, I left aligned the text, which is usually flows better for two column layout. And this is sort of a two column layout with the bike situated to the right and the content on the left. Now next is his call to action, which is way too much of an afterthought. We need to really make it stand out. And we can do so by making the button background white and sticking with the monochromatic theme and the text black. Next is the circular page indicator navigation, which I largely keep the same, although the placement is different in that it's more in line with the content to the right of it, with more white space between those elements. 
And just to fill up the layout a bit more and really feature the product, I decided to enlarge the bike all the way and then fade off the right side of the bike as it wasn't in the original photograph. Finally, I put a secondary call to action with less emphasis by giving it an outline instead of a fill. And he had this button buried like way below at the bottom, which is too much of an afterthought. For this entry, I decided to focus on something below the traditional fold like we did in the previous two examples, as this is just a section where he's showcasing his portfolio examples, each with a thumbnail and accompanying text. To me, on this desktop version, I feel there's not enough white space between the various elements, and I think something more unique can be done to showcase the project thumbnail. So the first thing I do is get a perspective mobile mockup with a quick mobile preview of what the project looks like. To me, this gives it much more of a unique way to visualize the project rather than just having a thumbnail screenshot with an outer glow. Next, I wanted to also showcase the original desktop version of the design. So I sit there for a while trying to figure out alignment and such between these two depictions of the design. But eventually I hide the thumbnail, but I bring it back later on when I have the actual type based content shown alongside of it. Notice that I'm giving a lot more white space between these various elements compared to the previous design. This makes it much more easier to read. I bring back that thumbnail and experiment a bit more with the positioning of these elements now that we have the type content. Then I replicate it and recreate the second portfolio project in the same manner. I also decide to flip the phone to make it a little bit more interesting with the right left alignment theme. And I decided to omit the red line separator between each portfolio example as that's totally unnecessary and only clutters the design. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Did you agree or did you disagree? If you did, either way, let me know what you think in the comments here. Give a like, a subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.